it's wonderful that we have so much great conversation we're interested in having with one another. I hope you stay and continue talking when the meeting's over. Um, also, if there are a few people who would like to help you 15 minutes to tidy the room, that would be greatly appreciated. So if you don't mind staying for 15 minutes after, uh, please, please do so. I'm Karen Arambo, Vice Chair for Assembly District 30. Uh, Vice Chair Elena Loomis for 8029 is not here this evening. And Alan Hoffa, the chair, is out of state. So, so uh, even though we started late, uh, we will finish by 8.30. Uh, when we're moving things on the agenda, please know that this is not to discourage conversation. Uh, my intention is to move through the entire agenda. If something is uh, rich in conversation and stirring a lot of participation, we'll make note of that, assess the time, move to the next items, go to the bottom of the agenda, and come back to it. And again, we're not trying to silence voices. We're trying to honor the interest of all of the uh, agenda items. Sound OK? Great. Yeah. OK, great. Um, folks who are voting members are invited to sit around uh, the table. If you do not wish to sit around the table, you don't have to, but please know that you are welcome. And there are seats up here which you're welcome to occupy. Our first item is uh, public comment. Uh, these comments are intended for non-agenda items. If you are a member of this committee, I hope that you will limit your participation in public comment, making room for other people who have no voice at this meeting. And if you're, uh, you are a member of this committee, uh, if there's some way to tie your announcement to something else on the agenda, that also is appreciated. Yet, yet you can participate in public comment. So please limit your comments to one minute. Are there members of the public who would like to speak? Please raise your hand. I will. Uh, yes, bear with me for just a minute. I've been reading two books. One of them is Melody Nalba's book on fascism, which says, look out, and gives many examples of there you go. I finally recommend it. It's a personal as well as a historical thing. I should say to you all, in my other life, I'm a professor of history. Okay? Second book is Comey's book uh, on lives, truth, and uh, leadership. I recommend that extremely highly for us Democrats. And I want to say one more thing, and I'm going to sit down in a minute here. But uh, alternate facts, false news, and other kinds of BS have been around since George Washington style. That's the first thing. Um, but my message to you Democrats is this. Beware of what the Republicans are experiencing. Because we too could have a problem. It used to be that we talked about yellow dog Democrats. We could vote for any yellow dog as long as we're Democrat. Now I think we're going to talk about what? Red dog Republicans who vote for any SOP as long as they vote. Uh, this is a danger in democratic society. In which case is it presents the Civil War? Yeah. I think we have to be partisan, go for our issues, but remember that government works when there's some kind of compromise involved. If you never compromise, you never speak to the other guys, we are in prison. And now I'm going to sit down. Thank you. Are there other members of the public who wish to speak? Yes, Bill, representative for District 5. Yeah, Bill Leone, uh, representative for District 5. I was uh, elected uh, on a progressive ticket, along with a number of other um, people who ran. Uh, I just want to announce that uh, I personally uh, am supporting uh, Kayla Jones for Mayor of Seaside and uh, John the Wiz Wizard for City Councilman. Uh, they are uh, steadfast, progressive uh, officials, and they will carry the mission uh, of many of our uh, 
positions. And uh, if you don't think this is a time of um, urgency, I too recommend that you read this book along with the book uh, What You Would Like. Uh, very scary and um, very motivating. Thank you very much. Other members of the public who wish to speak on an item not on the agenda. Ted. Uh, my name is Ted White. I'm an alternative representative from South County. <coughs> Can I ask you for a brief definition of fascism? Because my feeling is we have five people that are not elected. We have no way to get rid of them except for impeachment. And those people have an absolute say in the uh, way that the United States operates, including stands against certain religions and races. They've thrown an election in 2000, uh, presidential election, and we seem to have no say over their ability. So can you give me a, a to me that's fashion, part of fashion. Can you give me a brief definition? Thank you very much for that comment. Comments will just remain if folks would like to engage in conversation to answer questions that are asked in public comment. I encourage that. Anybody else from public com for public comment? And I just want to say, everyone who's spoken so far is already a member of this committee, dudes. <laughs> so the proper way to get something on the agenda that is re relevant to this organization, and everybody's invited, is send a to us, put it on the agenda, and speak with the voice that you are you are given. Um, we can have a great conversation about fascism in a half hour presentation at the beginning of any meeting. Um, I just want to say that. Gary. Uh, late breaking uh, action developed here. Families belong together to support immigrant rights. will happen in many places throughout our Tri County area. Uh, Saturday, June 30th, 4 to 6 at Windwan Bay. And I have an invite else in around. Thank you very much. Amit. Good evening, Amit Pandya. You guys probably all know me. The following are my observation and my observations only. For the last meeting for Central Committee, that was a discussion regarding our new Director of Communication. That discussion happened between the Chair, Co Chair, and one of the other virtual I raised my hand approximately three minutes. Alan saw it, acknowledged it, waved the hand, and moved on to the next agenda. When the leadership of a group silences and chooses not to listen to one of its own members, something is wrong with this leadership. The meeting before that, we spent 28 minutes, entirely too long a time, discussing a statutory central committee member versus an elected one and what their responsibilities was. And it seemed like it was all handled towards a personal issue with one candidate. When you think about a single person and dump on them in an open meeting that's a democratic meeting, something's wrong with the leadership. The meeting prior to that in Seaside, we got talked to like we're little kids from our father who yelled at us on do's and don'ts and you can't do this and you do this and you guys are this, this and that. A single-sided diatribe that flowed for almost 10 minutes on the values of being a human being, values of being a Democrat, and how we're better than Republicans <laughs> and what you should do, we should not do. I see a dangerous trend when the leadership of our Democratic Party, the name is Democratic, does not feel they have to be held responsible and they're not sensitive to the wishes of the party and the central community itself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there other comments, public comments, for items not on the agenda? Natalia. Yes, good afternoon. Natalia Molina, uh, alternate for Tanya Williams. Two announcements, and it, and it dovetails with what you were mentioning a minute. You may want to consider um, having a conversation with the National Coalition Building uh, Institute. They do excellent training on diversity and inclusion, uh, doing, uh, making sure that we're honoring everybody at, at the table. Uh, I'm a member of that organization and I would strongly encourage just the following. 
The second announcement is, and Gary was with me at this this weekend, the Poor People's uh, Campaign is, Poor People's <coughs> Movement is launching a movement. They had their first meeting uh, on Saturday. What was the name of the church again? It was my first time at the church. Church of God in Christ. Greater Victory. Greater Victory. Thank you very much. And, uh, wait, you were there, wizard. The whiz was there as well. My point is, one of the things that they're, John was one of the things that they're trying to launch is voter registration. And at that meeting, I suggested, hey, join us. Consider uh, doing, uh, being a guest speaker. So I want to let you know, they're trying to do voter registration, perhaps inviting Regina Mason here to be a guest speaker might be an option. That is all. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Are there any other public comments for items not on the agenda? Yes. Hi. Um, I, I'm here because um, I'm having quite a bit of a problem with um, a certain organization, and I lost my home. I'm disabled. Will you tell us your name, please? My name is Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Um, and it's been a nightmare dealing with this um, agency. I've tried to reach out for help, and no one helps me. They've asked me to do things like look for a job when I'm disabled which is against the law. I reached out to Jim Parker, Jim Parker actually reached out to Elliot and had them stop that because because of the things they've asked me to do, I'm now facing felony charges in court. So um, a lot of women are felt unsafe there. They're afraid to speak up. Our homes are not up to code. I have pigeons living in my um, in my attic. I have no screen. Um, and by all means necessary, if I have no income, it's I'm forced to go and apply for welfare, so long as they get the third person friend. So um, you know, it's just it's been really, really hard on myself and my child, and she has ADHD. So you know, I'm really hoping that I can find help. Okay, thank you very much for stressing your need. Is there anyone else who has a public comment? Can I go one? Wes. Uh, so, um, Selena's just passed this uh, oversized vehicle RV van. Um, Marina's got one. Uh, Monterey's got one. Pacific Grove's considering one. Uh, Seaside, I think, has one. And now Selena's has one. Monterey County, the Lapis Road thing just happened. Uh, people are running out of options. This is Salinas is the county seat, um, and I'm hoping you know that, that uh, I've reached out to the board of supervisors. I've reached out to council members. At least I got a three to four vote out of that. Um, but we need to do something, people. I mean, we're, we're worried about a lot of national issues. We also need to be worried about local issues, and these are some human rights, civil rights violations. Um, people should, you know, if if it's a legal vehicle, it's already a law that, that you can park on the street, yet now we're making a gated community in the county seat where people have to come to access services that are yet unattainable. So we're, we're in this conundrum of like, where do these people go? And now they're completely blown out of this county altogether and they're, they're lifers in this county and even in Salinas proper. Um, we need help, we need a lot of help, legal help, uh, you know, um, trying to put pressure on the council and the management uh, if, emails and everything like that. Even though it just passed, supposedly they're talking about remedying something, but as far as it's written, it's just everybody's gotta go. And there's nowhere for people to go. We'll be putting them into tents after we take away their RVs and nobody wants to see anybody in a tent, so we take away the tent. It's a downward spiral, we're creating shoots and destroying ladders. This is affordable housing and uh, I need help, too, for a lot of other people. Thank you so much for your comments. Any public comment on the items not on the agenda? I understand that. Kayla. Um, going off of what Wes said, um, the City of Seaside has a new homeless committee that I started, and they meet Thursdays the same time as the NAACP um, at 6.30. And we recently gave them $60,000 to use, hopefully before the coming cold months. And please go to their meetings and tell them how you'd like to see the money used. We're giving them, that, that's their project and they're coming 
back to the council with that. Um, so we'd like to see hopefully long-term housing built, permanent housing, and then also a year-round shelter is what I would like to see. The other thing is um, today I signed on with Mayor Jose Girola from the city of Arvin, and um, I'm a member of the National Young Elected Officials Network. And we signed a letter to Governor Jerry Brown in regards to the fossil fuel industry. I can provide a letter via email to the party leadership. But we're asking other elected officials in the region to sign on. We're asking for four specific, um, I won't say it for time, but we're asking for four specific actions from him. Um, so I would share that. And then the last thing is, again, with um, my fellow members of the National Young Elected Officials Network, we're signing an open letter to Donald Trump, Secretary Nielsen, and Attorney General Jeff Sessions to urge them to end the practice of detaining and incarcerating families in the asylum. Um, we already have over a thousand elected and appointed officials across the country that have signed on to this. So I will provide a copy of the letter, but it would be great if we could have county parties also sign on to this and other local elected officials. So, thank you very much. Are there any other public comments on items not on tonight's agenda? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if there's anything going in Salinas or Monterey or Seaside concerning the, the separation of families with the, what's going on with the immigration. This is a terrible, rude thing that's going on with these families. But there is going to be a protest in Watsonville, which I'm planning to attend, unless somebody tells me there's something going here in Salinas or Monterey or Seaside. They're going to have a protest from 2 to, uh, two to 4 in Watsonville Plaza, if anybody's interested. You know, uh, being there, I know there's a lot of protests going around with different kind of issues. Uh, but I think it is important too, because it's separating kids from their parents, their family, and that's very important, you know. Kids are suffering out there, and we need to have the heart to uh, go and help them uh, protest for, for what Trump is doing against his families. Even, even though he said that he's getting families back together, there's 2,200 children still uh, separated from the family. Thank you so much. So there's that event in, in, that Mary Lou made mention of, and then what Gary made mention of. If you want to know more about that, connect after the meeting, please. Are there, are there any more, you can ask her after the meeting, are there any more public comments on items not on the agenda? First, two to four in Watsonville, four to six in Monterey. Okay. Any, more public comment, any more public comments on items not on the agenda? Okay, great. Then we're going to move to swearing uh, new representatives. So the, the ones that are pending are Joy Espinosa for Canada Dems and Canada Dems re -ups. Natara Denga for Young Democrats, not here tonight. Mira Saleh, who is an alternate for Bill Bozeman, please come up. And I'd like to announce uh, Alexia Garcia. If, you'll, if you're in the room, raise your hand. She's not here today. And uh, Alexia will be an alternate for Dominic after going for Assembly District uh, 30 Executive Board Member after she goes through the vetting process. But Mira is here tonight to be sworn, so um, we'll take the oath of office that is sent to you. So if you'll kindly uh, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, say your name, your full name. I am your full name. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. The Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of California. Um, against all enemies foreign and domestic. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to those constitutions. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. True faith and allegiance. To those constitutions. To those constitutions. That I will honor and uphold. That I will honor and uphold. The bylaws of Monterey County Democratic Central Committee. The bylaws of the Monterey County <coughs> That I take this obligation freely. <coughs> that I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without mental reservation. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. And during such time as I hold this position as an MCDC member. And during such time as I hold this position as an MCDC member. Right on.
But uh, if someone is earnest about the seed, we're going to go ahead and appoint people. So, but we prefer you have someone of your own choosing. Um, there you go. Also, we have a new club, a new club that qualified, and I sent an email to that club to announce who their members are going to be. I don't know if you're ready to do that. I don't see the person in the room anymore. Okay, we'll come back to that later. Okay, okay. Uh, consent agenda. So in advance, the minutes and financial reports were sent to you. They have been uh, uh, reviewed by the executive board and provided to you in advance. The executive board re recommends that they be passed as one motion. Uh, you don't have to do that, uh, but you can if you want. Yes, Paula. The minutes, I, I just looked at the, I wasn't at this last meeting, and thanks to James for being diligent in taking the minutes. I know how hard it is. But there are several places where it has a question mark. So I was hoping that that could be the where these minutes are actually adopted. So I'd rather than stop the meeting and ask what questions. For someone like you to later tell me what they are. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm just saying I don't think we should be adopting minutes that don't clearly have. I can go through I'm not saying that I would just say policy-wise, it doesn't make sense to adopt minutes, but mm -hmm. we've done that. We've done that a lot in other groups I'm with. The person who takes the minutes um, reaches out to people to fill in those spots between the meetings. That's something we could do because going through this point by point, I think we could go through it now too. Or we could refrain from adopting them now and give an additional month for the secretary to fill in those blanks. There is only one place where I got that. So Adam from the Young Democrats, what's his last name? Hendricks. Hendricks? Hendricks, D I N T E R O T S. And then there's several other places. I'm kind of like maybe four or five places. I'm, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. I have five minutes, they should have. So may I suggest that we uh, postpone uh, approving the minutes this month and uh, that the secretary work on uh, with whom filling Sorry. those in? Is, is okay, with all due respect, this is the time to make the changes. It only would take a couple of minutes. Just tell me where the problems are and if anybody okay. sees them, I'll fix it. Okay, you've got the first one where it says Adam, then Yeah, Adam. I just fixed that. Okay, so Monterey 4th of July phrase says marching question mark, and I don't know what that means exactly. Where is this? Monterey 4th of July phrase says marching question mark, and I'm not sure what the question mark is for. Oh, whether or not we're, we're going to march. Okay. That's All right, then on the next page, nomination of Sonia question marks nominated by question marks. So, okay, I need Sonia's last name. It's on the sign-in roster. It's uh, yes, but what is it? Yes, Anthony. I moved to the documents. That's not. Oh. That's not. You would need a second on that. Okay, James, you're next on the motion. With a 
sample corrections. This is how we've been doing it since I began. I'm aware. There's different Look, ways to if do anybody it. else wants to be secretary, fine. I only took this because nobody else wanted to do it. My life is really busy. I'm trying to do the best I can. Everybody should have this. Okay. Everybody should have the same amount of time and the same amount of respect. Nobody should be put in front of somebody else, and if you're not going to do it according to the rules, then what do you do for? Uh, Paula? Okay. Jen, I, this is not meant as a criticism. No, no, I'm not. I'm I think you, did, you do really hard work here. I agree. I take minutes for the track level. Yeah. Up. I, all I'm saying is just a matter of process. Okay. I don't think things should be adopted. I think you're supposed to, there should be an enumeration of who nominated. Just as a matter of policy, right. we need to get those question marks cleared up. So if it doesn't happen beforehand, it should happen here, it should happen between here and the next meeting. I appreciate all the work that you're doing. I really do. Thank you. Call the question. Call the question. All those in favor of putting off, again, just a strategy, putting off the minutes until next meeting, so we have plenty of time to correct them. Say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. 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 Okay, the motion, any abstentions? The motion passes, so no problem. Let's all look them over and send our uh, information to James, or you can send it to Alan, Elena, or me, and we'll pass them on to James if you don't have his email address. And that really is pressure and supports James. Um, I'm sorry.
We are the uh, community organization that has the oversight and, um, for interacting between our community and all of the government organizations and agencies, county, local, state, and national. And so for some reason, whenever we bring up a matter, it's overlooked by us and it goes to somebody else in the community. What do you call that? And you can hear it. So uh, it's not only a problem in this place, it's a problem in our community. We work very hard. We don't have grants. We hardly have any kind of donations. And I invited Elizabeth here today because these are the people who are contacting us. These are the people who are having the problems. Uh, we are the group, uh, this is a public group that not only elects people in office, but we have the responsibility of overseeing the fact that the people we put in office are addressing not only the uh, concerns and issues of their favorite people or those that have status positions, but everyone in the community. Now, uh, <laughs> I've said that before, and I'm saying it right now. Affordable housing, I'm also a commissioner in this county with the Community Action Commission. I don't get paid. So why is it that I can attend, all these meetings have to be in on this, this uh, member of this board, this uh, group, the Democratic Central Committee for years, the Democratic Committee for years, and, and um, we're still having the same problem. I don't see the improvements in our community. I talk to the elected officials, they come to my office, they say we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, and then when they go away to their, perfect, uh, their prospective places, I, you, know, you don't hear from them. And so I keep bringing these concerns forward. We have people who are afraid they are afraid in their own homes, houses, temporary housing, what do you call it, whatever kind of housing, they are being threatened, harassed. If you don't do this, you can be put out of your housing. We don't care if you've got children. We don't care about your situation. We don't care if you have jobs where you can afford to pay uh, to live in housing. That's not our concern. That's a lie. It is every last person in this room is our concern. And if it's not our concern, there's no such thing as a democratic value. And I want to make that clear. Because the values are what's coming from our community that connects us one to another. The organizations are co not connected. Some are connected to each other. The others are left out. The same thing with the churches, with every group in this county, there is these little groupations of people that get together and make sure that they're okay, that they have their jobs, they have their housing, and they are puffed up, and they think that they are more important than other people. That is not the way we should operate. Our government should operate that way. You know how I know? I worked as a government employee. I traveled across this country for this community, for Monterey County, after the closure of this base. I, I'm one of the reasons why we're getting all this money in the county. Oh yeah, people use me when I get up and speak about the desperate things in our county, the lack of housing, the low homelessness. I've been doing this for years. The money comes into the county and we never see it again. We have great big houses being built on a military base. This base have had every war, the soldiers have come here to train. <clears throat> All the equipment has been here. And now they're building half million dollar houses, $600,000 houses, and they said we're gonna set aside some for affordable housing. Then when I tell people to go to apply, they're told, well, they said we get $10 too much and we need to write a letter. The, the trick is, if nobody gets these set-aside housing that's supposed to be set aside for affordable housing, 
it goes to market value. That's what keeps happening here. There is no way the cities should be telling people that if they can't afford to live here, they should move. They should move out of their respective positions. That's what should happen. If they cannot respect the people who live in their counties and in their cities and their right to exist and their right to have a, a, a place to live, decent jobs, then they should not be in office. They should not be supported by anyone in the community. And, and I hope I made that clear because this has been going on for much too long. Much too long. I also, we know what affordable housing is. I'm not going to be processor wise. It simply means out of the money that I make, how much can I afford to pay to keep a roof over my head, take care of my family, pay for all the utilities, all the prices that are going up on everything, the water, the gas, every single thing. How much will I have left to pay to have a place to stay? All of the people who are living in temporary shelters, the homeless people on the streets, the ones that are living in inclusionary housing, whatever names that they're given, they are making money. Some of these people pay $1,200 a month to live in these temporary whatever these things are. The veterans, they have veterans who are paying $700 a piece to live in a place with two other veterans, which means three at a time. They pay for a room $700 a month. Now, we talk about our veterans. They have created a safe atmosphere for our country. They come home, and all the television ads are saying, thank you for your service. Well, I tell you what, they're tired of that. If you want to thank them for their service, put some action into it, not the words. They got a place where they can be sick. They have a cemetery where they can die. But they don't have housing they can live in and feel like they're free to enjoy the rest of their lives. Now, if we are human beings, I hope, I hope there's no robots in this room. I hope there are no robots in our county. And, and, and the thing about it is this used to be a very close community. And a lot of these people have had to leave because of the unconcern for the situation that has developed here. It did not develop because of just the economic conditions. It developed because most of these communities were families of military people who have had to leave, uh, uh, have their careers taken away from them, not able to pay for their housing, and so they had to leave. And they, the county or whoever it is decided to keep the prices the way they were. They never decreased the rents, the cost of housing, and they kept it this way year after year after year so that, they, so that people could not flourish, could not live in this county. And that's a shame. And you talk about, oh, they, they're, they're Oh, they're not, you know, they got problems, and oh, I'm very lazy, and they need to get a job. That's a lot. It's a lot. And we need to come up. You don't like it, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. We need to come up. We need to stand up. We need to come together, and we need to be concerned about our own people in our own county, in the state of California. All these wonderful things that are being said. We got, we got all kind of. Oh, well, we go, we go every every week. We take food and deliver it to people. We don't get anything for that. But everybody else has got to have a big fat grant and a whole lot of money to do their job. And how come we can do the jobs of I don't know how many agencies and other people get the credit for it? I heard some of that in the room today. It's a shame. But you know what? We keep working in
anyway. Just keep on overlooking us because, you know, it's all right. But I have proof of every single thing we've done and we've said and we have pleaded, we have begged, we've gone to the top of the mountain looking for help to keep people in their homes that are crying, that are sick. All these things happen to them that nobody seems to care about. And then we vote for folks because um, we expect them to care. And they're not going to care unless we push them to care. I was already told that by some of the elected officials that we have to push them. And if people are afraid to speak out, guess what? They're not going to be pushing. They're going to be begging, please help me. So I'm also the chair of the Ad Hoc Rent Control Committee. Now, we're putting out a petition for people to sign for rent control. Since affordable housing is so hard, let's see what rent control will do. Because if we stop raising the rents, every year, it seems to be a thing that people can do in this county. Whatever they want when it comes to money, if they got money, they can raise the rent. They can raise the utility bill. They can raise the water bill. They can do all these things, and it affects the people in our community. We don't need to keep pushing out the people in our community and replacing them with, with folks with deep pockets from New York and, and uh, all this kind of stuff. And where is the money going? Where is the money being used for? That's what everybody is asking. We have a budget report here at the Central Committee, but we don't get the information from the different entities around the county. The county is not working with the cities. The cities are not working with the county. They got a poor board that they claim that everybody is working with, except for the people in the communities. We get a chance to get up and speak for three minutes, and we get two or three people out of the community, the rest of our contractors and all this. We need to change the way that we're looking at folks and looking at our community. What's wrong with that? Civil rights, human rights. We have rights. This is America. We keep saying we're in America. I hope we're still in America. Uh, I'd be very afraid if you're not. So somebody needs to make this clear. Affordable housing is a right. It's not a term that popped up out of nowhere. It's something that we must initiate, that we must embrace, so that people can have a place to stay and, and business people can stop complaining about the guy sleeping on, the, on the, the bench next to their business and keeping folks from coming in. That's all we're saying. We can't do it the wrong way. We can't just keep pushing people out and tell them to go somewhere else. There's nowhere else to go. We got this problem all over the country. And we're supposed to be the state that everybody is looking at across the, the nation. We lead out, right? We're supposed to lead out with things, not with lies. So uh, who's got to watch? I have to watch. Okay, how well how about yeah, like I got what? You have five little less than five minutes. Little less than five minutes. I'm so glad you're this is number six. Okay. <coughs> okay. We have all the housing on four. I mean, all the buildings. Now, 20 years, we have barracks sitting there, which can be used uh, now to negotiate more money <laughs> that's supposed to be taken down, which would put all that stuff in the atmosphere that people would have to be. It's been sitting there. They've been just sitting there. People have said, why can't we use these buildings? Why can't we make apartments for folks? Or the, the people that we are calling homeless, or the people who don't have uh, enough money to pay all these high rents. Absolutely, we've gone over everybody 
is here and is being negotiated by contractors, developers, and all those folks who are coming in here. Um, I can't be the only one that's concerned about uh, uh, gentrification and, and displacing our community and, and, and uh, can't be the only group that's concerned about that. We're the only group I know that's not getting any of these big grants or in, in grants, as a matter of fact. So I'm just uh, asking people, and I have uh, asked that people work with me on this affordable housing thing. And, and uh, I heard a couple of people say something that everybody else is going outside saying, oh, we're going to do it over here, we're going to do it over there. So that to me is saying, uh, yeah, we're not going to the Democratic Central Committee, but you know, we don't like what you have to say. And, and of course, there's not too many of you if you're in the first place and never have been. So that, that brings up a, a really big question. What is really going on? <clears throat> what is really going on? And so if we embrace other issues and concerns, and we just sweep over any other issues and concerns, there is something very, very wrong with our thinking. And, and, and with uh, very wrong with our thinking. And we keep saying the right words, but we're not taking the right actions. So I'm going to stop right now and ask if there's any questions. Just raise your hand if you have questions, and we'll, we'll stack. Tell me your name again, please. Andrea. Andrea. So we'll do Andrea, Amit, Mary Lou. Who else? <coughs> And, okay, so we'll do Andrea. Wait, I have a question. Andrea, okay, so we'll put you in the yeah. Andrea, Amit, then about Mary Lou, then Ted. About the process real quick. Is it just questions or is it comments? And Kayla. Well, we have, it's, um, it's a conversation, so. Cool. Okay.
exception from other elected officials in the jurisdictions? What, what we've, been, uh, we've been working on this for a long time uh, for the Environmental Justice Network. Like I said, we're going to have a venue at the Monterey College of Law on Saturday. Uh, and we're going to have petitions there for people to sign up on rent control. I walked into an auto parts store and somebody mentioned uh, housing and I started talking about rent control and a young man at the counter said, you know what? I'm going to have to put my job and move out of this county because I can't afford to pay the rent. And he said he really wanted to sign the petition. There's a lot of people that want to sign. And, and what I'm trying to do now, we're contacting our elected officials. We're already talking to some of the supervisors. We want them to sign off on this stuff. The state, the, the state senator and all those, we want them to sign off on it because uh, we're not going to do this by ourselves. If we don't, we, we need to get support from our elected officials, our community, and from the people who are afraid to speak up. We need to get their support, and they need to sign on and work with us. Okay, great, very good. Yes, I just wanted to comment on this. Is something much harder than what you think. It's going on in the state of California. It's going on over the nation. You know uh, what's happening is a lot of investors, contractors that, that are buying. The properties, the homes, they're actually uh, buying it from vacation homes to rent them, especially down along the coast of California. You know, uh, it, is, it is very hard for the people to keep up paying the rent so they lose their houses, you know, because they're controlling what to buy it. And they promised the counties that they're going to uh, put a affordable house in there, but they only put a couple of them, maybe out of the uh, 20, they will only put about one or two affordable housing. You know, it's something that, that is more powerful than what you think. Is investor buying from China, buying from other nations, or buying the coast of California? You know, it's just, uh, you know, they're just selling really high prices. It began already in San Francisco, you know, down all the way to San Diego, I see, because I, I've been following the news, you know, investor. What the main topic is here is that we have to get a bill where they can control the rent and have to contract with people from buying for investment. That's what's going on. They're investing. And the people are losing their home, but of course they cannot afford to pay what they what they're asking for, you know. But uh, this is much much stronger than what you think. It's just just the county of We know about every last thing that you're talking about. We have been addressing those things. And what we need, like I said, is for the community itself to step up. Uh, we know about all of those things. Well, okay. so that is what needs to be controlled. Okay. So then, tips. Uh, well, question or comment? What's the name of the organization and how does the person become involved? It's the Fort Worth Environmental Justice Network. I'm sorry, I couldn't say that. Fort F O R T. Fort F O R T. Fort Environmental Justice Network. And that's good for this area because it affects other parts of the county. We I, I had a what I have, we well, I live in South Canada, and that situation is where I'm trying to get people to fix my house, and I can't get people to come down to South County to fix my house. And the police are coming at points and saying, you have to fix this because it's against the... I say, well, are you going to come and fix it? Or are you going to get someone to come? You can order me around. How about ordering a workman to come? We work and, all over the state. I find, okay, so that's, that's my question. Great. And the final one will be Kayla. Well, uh, I can do this super fast, but what's the, is it like one minute? No, nope. <laughs> no, nope. it's like four or five. Okay. Keep going. Um, okay, so I'm Kayla Jones. I serve on the Seaside City Council. I was elected in 2016, and I'm currently running for mayor. Um, and so we're doing a lot on the peninsula that I think should be building on around. Oh, well, are you talking to me? Yeah.
but nobody's there to back up what I'm saying. Okay. So, well, why don't you get with us? I would like to, to talk to you more about this because okay. I've attended a Seaside City Council meeting for years and didn't get any uh, anything back from it, but I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to change. Right, right. Okay, and I, I try and keep the public as aware as I can via social media, Facebook, and email blocks to let them know what's going to uh, you know. There's a Facebook group called Modern Peninsula Renters United that has not been started. Um, she's trying to organize people to show up to these meetings and speak and have large events with people. So I would suggest that kind of people join their group. Well, give me my name. My name is Yvonne Stone. I'll give you my phone number. Okay. 277-5241. 
Otherwise, uh, the others who requested paperwork could <coughs> fill those slots. And I had requests from uh, David Amit and, uh, and um, Erica Padilla Chavez, but we haven't seen any paperwork yet. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, I don't quite understand. Why is there a limitation on the number of clubs? Ah, would somebody, Joe, would you like to explain how the bylaw, what the bylaws the bylaw said about that, the one third? There's one third of the uh, statutory. statutory members. It's all a numbers game. Uh, it's one third of the statutory members that we have here at Portland Club uh, is, is how it works. Right, so we have 27 statutory seats, and the clubs can only represent <laughs> one third. So up to nine. So up to, up nine. to nine. Up to nine. And we have seven now. And so clubs could choose to be chartered and they'd kind of be in the wings, but they wouldn't have a voting uh, seat. So what are you talking about in the representation of the committee? Vote. Voice and vote here. Yes. But we have 20 clubs. It's okay. Yeah, we have many clubs we, that we want. We encourage that. Yes, Ted. Why, why is that? It, because it's in the it's in the bylaws and, and why is it well, I wasn't back there, but I would imagine, I, I'm going to give you my opinion. My opinion is so that the elected people have the majority vote on this board, rather than a group of people with an, a particular interest establishing a club and then taking over the majority of the Central Committee. Okay, that at least, yeah, that at least makes sense. I didn't know what. Okay, cool. So now we'll have reports from the clubs. Uh, if, uh, we'll start with Democratic Women. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Regina Gage. Chris Walton, our uh, primary, is not here this evening, and her alternate, Elizabeth Gabriel, unfortunately, relocated to Colorado. Um, so I will just give the update. We're going to be dark in July. We will not have a luncheon. We usually have a monthly luncheon. Um, but we will have our uh, next luncheon in August, and then in September, we have our annual fundraiser. So that's really nice. Thank you so much. Uh, I would also like to give a thank you to the Democratic Women for donating $1,000 to the campaign. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, Andre Peninsula Democrats could not make it tonight. They don't have a report. Salinas Valley Dance. Okay, great. Um, young Democrats, no matter. 
members here tonight. Um, Seaside Democrats, would you like to give your first report to the Democratic Central Committee? Uh, short and sweet, we're up and running, and uh, we're inviting members from anybody who wants to participate in the club. But it's going well, and we have a lot of uh, support from the community, so short and sweet. Thank you so much. Uh, any new members want to join? My numbers it is in the book, and it's on the, uh, the documents on your sign sheet. Thank you very much. Forward with this resolution, and it doesn't have to come back to 
to us. They would take this wording, craft it to come from us, and move forward. Motion by Cassian. Second by Ted. Any discussion on that motion? Clarification. <coughs> so you said it wouldn't come back to the body for approval. Form in the committee and then be submitted by the committee. Right. They would take the, the, the substance of the resolution would be this text plus Republicans, and the issues committee would make would interpret our motion and move forward with it. So it's not delayed until July. How would I get Sure. Ten minutes. Oh, um, like a like resolution? Yeah. Okay, how about this? How about they do it? We send it out to the list. We allow a period for comment, and then it goes back to the issues to finish it. Would that be? All we're adding is Republican vote. Oh, there might be more. No, no concerns. Oh, no concerns. Yes, it's not this way. I haven't read the rate, but would it mention something? Um, all those kids that have. Um, yeah, their parents are in Mexico. And, yeah, and no, it's very thorough. I mean, it's in the minutes. I just didn't read it because it's in the minutes. Yeah, because I know kids that they have to go each year to go visit their parents because they're in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, I would say this is more of the immediate crisis of the border, but um, it does cover the yeah, separation. So just to explain the hard part about writing the this. Like the, the, the supervisor's board can write a very long resolution. And so we're limited to only three whereas clauses and two therefore be resolved. So on this one, we kind of cherry picked what other people had written. So we didn't necessarily get to reuniting families. This purely talked about the separation of families because the hard part is this guy's changing the goalposts every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could write a resolution every day for what this guy's going after. And so it was a difficulty of how do we put literally every bad thing he's doing into this and still fit it on the one page? Because that's what we're limited by. So to get all this stuff in, we're going to need further resolutions because it's just not going to fit on the one page. Great. Thank you very much for that. So any other feedback on the motion to approve this? How are the issues committee move forward? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Issues Committee, for your good work. Um, reports and updates. The endorsement committee. So the June uh, election endorsement committee was disbanded at our last meeting, and the chair, Alan Hoffa, asked uh, for people to express their interest in being on the next endorsement committee. The endorsement committee will be convened, uh, will be named at the July meeting. Are there any people here who would like to be on that endorsement committee? David? And yet Sonia? Patty? Okay, great. And then there were about five or six people, Wes, and there were about, um, I think, five or six people at the last meeting. Okay, so this and on it. Okay, great. There's going to be, um, we're going to get an earlier start on it because there are so many races, and the idea of a structure is to have chairs, uh, a chair or co chairs at the top, and then have like two or three different working groups, kind of sub subcommittees or task force, forces working in South Valley, Salinas, and on the peninsula, or it might be two, and county offices, who knows. But it's, we're going to get started much earlier than before. David. I just would like to report uh, to the Central Committee uh, the outstanding work of all the members of the, uh, the uh, subcommittee. Uh, I think everyone gave a really good effort and uh, made it pleasant and respectful. And I uh, think Karen did an excellent job of chairing the committee. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, it was, it was, we were not all in agreement, friends, and we, uh, we actually came to consensus, uh, except for one vote on one seat in our, uh, it's, it's, it's hard work, you know, just because we're Democrats, we don't always agree on everyone. And that's okay, we have to move forward together. Thank you, David. Okay, cool. Finance Committee, um, we received the reports. Do you have anything else you'd like to tell us? Um, as far as the reports are concerned, or just your committee inviting people? Or? Uh, I haven't heard much from anybody. 
um, as far as being against the city. Here, right? Just a quick question that you may have told me this the other day, but I forgot. I noticed on the uh, campaign committee uh, report it mentions that there's three candidates that agree to pay money toward the uh, our, um, our mailer, and there's still out There are two. There are two. Can we talk about that when we come to the campaign report? Well, this is fine. Anyway. Okay. There are only two. Okay. There, there are two on the, uh, on your, in your packet on the report. There are two. Okay. I don't know what email you're looking at. But. So 
so the people listed here are the chairs of these committees. And um, we always put them on the, the agenda so you know who to contact. And their email addresses are on our right over there. And everyone is welcome to join the committee. So they're not closed. Membership is not closed for any of these committees. The only one that's appointed is the endorsement committee. Okay. Okay, so development. David. Yes. Uh, first, I apologize that I did this to the commission yesterday. So uh, I had passed this little reminder here. Uh, the dinner, I'm sorry, I put August 18th, the dinner is August 17th, and I'm sorry, so my apologies for that. Yes, it's August 17th, it's the Friday. Friday 1-7. Yes, Friday 1-7. So uh, the development committee is going to have three meetings uh, next week. Uh, July 2nd, here, at the, right in that room, on Monday, at the Center for Change. And then the next two after that are going to be at the Seaside Center for Change. Uh, all times will be at 6 o'clock. And then uh, you, and then, uh, which is it? Oh, Gary, thank you for the response.
Um, if you look at the results, it says 15 of the candidates were endorsed and prevailed and three did not. It was actually 19. It had 19 endorsed races and, and, and so um, the number is off by one. So 16 and three. 16 prevailed, three did not. Anyway, um, I, I also want to say, Gary, that the two people listed here have outstanding pledges. The third one, you got your email that someone sent you was incorrect. That person did not make a pledge. That's why I was, I apologize for tapping like that. Would you like to report on this? And then we'll have a discussion about the campaign, the June campaign.
are we not consuming yours? Uh, but we have to do all that in a very targeted, cogent, intelligent way, so we're not just flailing about, which is the way I used to run campaigns, everybody is just flailing about. So you're most likely to lose because you don't really know what you're doing. But we have the tools, we have uh, people that can help us focus our campaigns so that we uh, win more campaigns. And we also do justice by the voters. I mean, the voters are really the center of attention, not the candidates. It's voters, volunteers, and candidates, um, and that work. So, we've got to treat voters well, we've got to treat volunteers well. I would like to uh, thank uh, Gina for stepping up to run for office. Yes. And <laughs> Campaign committee, the same one that, that we were just talking about, the big D or the litter D uh, one. Um, <clears throat> there was 
a, st a mission statement just recently is that the same one gary the um the monterey county and we put country on it for s some reason a meeting ago i don't understand the question is that the same thing the campaign committee is that the one that i went to with the the country and county and we made a typo don't worry about it. I'm, I'm emailing Elena now. I don't know. The campaign committee is a standing committee that uh, works on the campaigns, and Elena is the chair. For MCDCC. For just Monterey County Democratic Central Committee. That is correct. And it's, you're welcome to attend. You're welcome to participate. Okay, great. Um, oh, and at the bottom, notice for the November election, I really want to highlight what they need. The reinvigorated committee, volunteers for the 4th of July, because that's where we're going to get a lot of more, you know, new members, new people. Promoting and attending the dinner, that is part of our November election, raising that money. Uh, volunteers at the Monterey County Fair, and then hosting here at the Centers for Change, phone banking, precinct walking, and so forth. Um, if you can clear the weekend for get out the vote, that would be great. We had someone who was a big supporter that had a hair appointment, and I don't know. Maybe it wasn't hair. hair. Maybe I'm not going to say <laughs> the real reason I won't. I'm not going to say what it was, but we can't be thinking it's not going to make a difference if I'm not there. It makes a difference if you're not there. We need all hands on deck. So uh, you are important. Okay. Then we all move on to um, Jan Black, who is our representative to the California State Democratic Party. And it, the uh, executive board is coming up July 13th to the 15th in Oakland. Um, there sure is a lot of excitement about the candidates. Uh, it's all about endorsements this time, and, and I have not been able to put down the phone without it ringing again in my hand. <laughs> it was just crazy. I had a, had a wonderful, um, kind of long conversation with Kevin De Leon this morning, and he ended up begging me to let him anything in the world he could do to, to help me out, and I, I forgot. I should have come, come back and give us a talk. Maybe I'll, I'll see him there. And, Um, of course, it, it, it's mostly about uh, candidates this time. Uh, there are some props too, and uh, one one that is going to be very hard fought uh, is going to be for uh, affordable housing. That's a really big issue this time, and thank you, Yvonne, for, for reminding us so fully about. When I get there, I'm going to make sure that they're mad as hell before they leave. <laughs> uh, that just drives me crazy. But um, anyway, I, Alan plans to go, and uh, Tyler and Dominic probably. <laughs> I don't know. But um, anyway, it's uh, open to guests. It, it's a, can be a very interesting event. So if anybody is, is interested in going, let me know and I'll direct you to the to, to the process. Where is it? Oakland. Oakland. Oh, yeah. In the in the uh Sunday? Yeah, what's the date? The date is July uh, 13th. Do something useful with it. 
Thank you very much, Jim. So, Juan uh, has a question. If a candidate received the party endorsement at the convention, does that candidate have to go through the process again to get endorsed? Uh, as long as there's only one Democrat in the race, the endorsement carries over. If there's two Democrats in the race, then it's up for nomination again. Except for lieutenant governor, there's a field name. There will be no endorsement made on lieutenant governor. The California Senate race, that one will have an endorsement vote. Well, so if, for example, and, and I'm afraid she's going against Republican, so the endorsement vote. Did you have anything else to report or should we throw it to Dom? Okay, thank you very much. And then also we have um, uh, Assembly District elected representatives to the Executive Board and that's Dominic for District 30 and Tyler for 29. You want to give uh, an yeah, idea? Yeah, just the same thing as I mentioned. Um, I, I would emphasize the caucuses are open to anybody. Um, and because it's in Oakland, the, these things shift between North and uh, South California. So they're not always easy to attend, but with this one being in Oakland, it's a little bit easier in terms of drive. Um, caucuses are able to at least influence the party on certain issues from within it. So if, if you really want to get involved on some of these statewide issues, be it rent control uh, or other issues, there is room in the caucuses to get involved. I mean, no, nobody for the Chicano Latino Caucus ran for the vice chair for this region. I ended up getting put on it just because I'm from this region. Yeah. So I mean, that's how little involvement there is sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I'll mention is we took a group to Republican headquarters uh, to try speaking to them about this child separation issue because they have a central committee just like we do. Uh, apparently, they found the time to be there that day that we went there. They did release a statement the night before. Um, saying nothing more than no, but I will be trying to get some people to go back next month because, you know, as we saw in this last race, we do need to differentiate between Democrats and Republicans, and if there are people who are going to run for cover and just choose the NPP route, then we're going to have to start deciding what that exactly means, because NPP for just a regular person on the street is a little bit different for electives. So I think at some point we're going to have to start having these discussions before elections because people are hiding behind it. You know, they're not independent of Republican values. And so that's why we're going straight to Democrat. We're Republican headquarters, calling them out. And yeah, so those MPP people, we might try to get them though. If they're not going to go, start asking them why. That's it. Great. Thank you for that idea, that great strategy. Future agenda items. I want to let you know that you are welcome to suggest uh, agenda items. Just send them uh, to Alan. His email address is down here. Or you can send them to Elena or me. Uh, the Monday before Executive Board. Executive Board is listed here on item 13. We meet on the third Wednesdays at Seaside. You are welcome to come, and they are open to the public. Um, Okay, so also if you have bylaws suggestions, we're keeping a running tab on how to better our bylaws. We're going to work on that in 2019. Something that's missing is from last, uh, last, last month's meeting, Tyler had suggested, and it's in the minutes, so we're going to add that on there. Um, but we're right on time. It's 827, and uh, it says adjournment by 8 p.m. That's incorrect. The top of the meeting is 630 to 830 is when we usually adjourn. So we are now adjourning early. Please hang around and help clean up and talk. Get to know one another.